This Lufthansa Airbus A320 was on an approach to Warsaw. They were informed there was severe wind shear on that approach and they decided to continue. What they didn't know is there was a weather front coming past the aerodrome which was about to cause some major variations to the wind. This combination of problems led to a catastrophic result. To see what happened and why, stay tuned. This is the story of Lufthansa Flight 2904. It was an Airbus A320 flying from Frankfurt to Warsaw on the 14th of September 1993. The aircraft and crew had already flown a few legs that day from Frankfurt to Barcelona and Barcelona back to Frankfurt and those trips were flown uneventfully with no issues. So for this leg from Frankfurt to Warsaw there were two pilots, four cabin crew and 64 passengers on board. For the pilots, the pilot in the left hand seat was an A320 captain. He was 47 years old and his total flying hours were 12,778 hours with 1,440 hours on the Airbus A320. For the duration of this flight, he would be the pilot flying and he was also under a test as he had not flown for the previous 90 days. The pilot in the right hand seat was also an A320 captain uh, and also an instructor who would be carrying out the testing for the duration of this trip. They were going to be the pilot not flying and was also 47 years old. Their total flying hours was 11,361 and their total hours on type was 1,595 hours. So the crews received all their pre-flight paperwork including weather information for Warsaw and boarded the aircraft along with the passengers and then commenced the start-up, taxi and then eventually take off en route to Warsaw. It's worth noting at this point that there was a weather front passing through Warsaw during the time the aircraft was airborne. This was expected to bring potentially some thunderstorms with it and a bit of low cloud. But at the time of takeoff, the information they had received was still well within limits and well within the legal parameters for them to continue. So I'll just put up here the forecast that they received. And it might look just like a jumble of letters and numbers to you, but I'll just run through it quickly just so you understand exactly what it means. So the first part is the time in which the forecast was received. Moving to the right of that, 17005 MPS. That is the wind direction and speed. So the wind is coming from 170 and it's five meters per second. The next number, the four nines, means that that's the visibility. So visibility of its four nines is 10 kilometers or above. The next part, uh, BKN 030, which means broken at 3000 feet. And that's referring to the cloud base. So very roughly uh, in terms of broken, what that actually means is over the top of an aerodrome, there's an imagined circle and that's split into eight sectors. And depending on how much of that, those sectors are filled up with cloud will depend on whether the cloud base is few, scattered, broken or overcast. So the next part says tempo, which means temporarily. So at 1521, it's temporarily becoming 6,000 meters of visibility. SH and RA means showers and rain. Broken at 2,000 feet. And the CB at the end is referring to cumulonimbus clouds, which are clouds that are usually associated with thunderstorms. And then after that, it says prob 30. So this is referring to there being a 30% chance of there being what it says here, TS, and that stands for thunderstorms. And then lastly, it says becoming. So the weather will become from 2124, 4,000 meters visibility. RA stands for rain and then overcast at 1,500 feet. So it's quite a lot to take in there, but basically all it's saying is at 1524, the weather is quite nice. There's going to temporarily be some showers and rain and the cloud base is going to lower with the probability of there being a few thunderstorms. And then it's becoming towards the evening a little bit worse with less visibility and a lower cloud base. But the main reason why I bring this up and why I think this is important for this incident is there's only one mention of the wind direction and speed in this forecast. And that becomes very important when this crew reaches Warsaw. So at 1427 UTC, they took off from Frankfurt on their way to Warsaw. They then climbed to flight level 330 and continued to cruise on their way into Polish airspace. As they started to get closer to Warsaw, they then listened in for the updated weather information on the Automatic Terminal Information System, or ATIS for short. 
the way in which they do that is they tune the ATS frequency and it will give them a computer-generated voice which will update them on the local weather at the aerodrome. And when they were listening to this information, they got an update on the wind, which was now 150 degrees at 22 kilometers per hour. Visibility was 10 kilometers and the clouds were at 2000 meters with the QNH being 997 hectopascals. As you heard, the cloud base was given in meters and not feet, but that has no effect on this incident. So after listening to the ATIS, the crew got in touch with air traffic control at Warsaw and informed them that they were ready for descent. They were then cleared to descend to flight level 190. A few minutes later, Warsaw ATC then told the crew to continue flight directly to the VOR at Warsaw. When the crew reported they were at flight level 190, they were told to contact Warsaw Approach on 128.8. And after making contact with Approach, they were cleared to descend to flight level 50, and then further cleared to descend to 950 meters on the QFE. At this point, the aircraft was past an altitude of 3,300 feet, and the crew then began to decrease the speed, looking for their landing speed of 130 knots. A few minutes later, approach control then radioed saying, the preceding traffic has reported wind shear on final approach 1-1. The crew of Lufthansa 2904 heard this transmission and then had a discussion about the procedures that need to put in place for wind shear on the approach. They then decided between them that they would increase their landing speed by 20 knots, aiming to achieve 150 knots at the threshold. One discussion that they failed to have at this point was the impact that this increased speed would have on their landing distance, and if runway 11 had the distance available to land with this increased speed. At this point, approach control called them and said, Lufthansa 2904, turn right 080 to lock onto ILS 11, cleared approach as number two, Call when established. They then reported that they were established on the ILS and were instructed to continue approach as number one and switch the tower frequency 126.6. Once they had switched the tower, the tower informed them to continue on the ILS approach. Call me in the outer marker, wind 160 degrees, 25 kilometers, and before landing, it was reported wind shear on final, runway 11. Lufthansa 2904 then replied with Roger, that's understood. I call you out to marker. At this point, the aircraft was passing through 2,800 feet and had an indicated airspeed of 163 knots and a ground speed of 180 knots. The aircraft that had just landed before them and then spoke to the tower. Warsaw Tower, good evening. Jet Aviation 101 is vacating runway 11 on taxi Echo Oscar. For information, we had severe wind shear on final. The tower then called Lufthansa 2904 and said, you are cleared to land runway 11, wind 160 degrees, 25 kilometers per hour. It's worth noting that at this point, the front had reached Warsaw Aerodrome and variable wind conditions came with it. It's reported that over 18 minutes in their approach to land in, the wind direction had changed from 160 degrees to 270 degrees. And it was reported that at the time of landing, the wind was coming from 220 degrees at 10 meters per second with gusts up to 15. So that turned their headwind into a tailwind, increasing their ground speed as they were coming in on an already fast approach. At this point, the aircraft was at 278 feet with an indicated airspeed of 147 knots, but a ground speed of 168 knots. As the aircraft was about to land, due to that crosswind, it caused the aircraft to slightly roll to the right with only the right landing gear making contact with the runway. And this lasted for nine seconds, which means that the ground spoilers and engine reversers were not activated because it requires both wheels to be on the ground, either spinning at above 72 knots or with weight on both landing gears. This meant that the aircraft was now 1,525 meters into runway 11 and at a speed of still 154 knots. As the aircraft was not slowing down, the pilot then asked the pilot in the right-hand seat to assist with braking. But after that left landing gear made contact with the runway and weight was applied, the ground spoiler and reverse thrusters were activated, but only up to 71% N1 on the engines. To make the situation worse, it was raining heavily and there was a layer of water on the runway, causing the rain to aquaplane, meaning that the brakes for the wheels were not working. The aircraft was beginning to slow, but not at a quick enough rate to stop the aircraft in time for the end of the runway. 
The pilots then noticed there was an embankment beyond the end of the runway and applied full right rudder to try and turn the aircraft to the right. The aircraft then left the end of the runway, still travelling at 72 knots, and collided with the embankment with its left wing and destroying the left landing gear and the left engine. After the aircraft came to a stop, the fuel in the left wing ignited and started a fire on the left-hand side of the aircraft. At this point, smoke was filling the cabin, but the cabin crew managed to start an evacuation and open the doors and release the slides for the passengers to escape. Within three minutes, fire crews were on station attempting to fight the fire, and most of the passengers and crew had escaped the aircraft. But unfortunately, in the crash, one of the pilots was killed immediately, and one of the passengers were killed. This meant that out of the total of crew and passengers of 70, 68 survived, most with injuries, and they were all taken to hospitals to be checked over. So what came from this incident then? So the recommendations that came from this report was there needed to be specific additions in the aircraft operation manual for the increased landing distance required when speed was increased for the reason of wind shear. There were recommendations to Airbus of the possibility of bringing in emergency use of ground spoilers and thrust reservers that worked independently of the criteria that was currently imposed on the aircraft. So as we discussed earlier, having both weight on wheel switches activated and or 72 knots of rotation speed on both landing gear wheels. Again, for the thrust reserve, the maximum it used was 71% of the engine's performance. And the recommendation was that in an emergency, that should be able to be increased to be able to stop the aircraft sooner. And for the Polish civil aviation authorities, their system of collecting and distributing meteorological information needed to be adapted to match the ICAO convention. And also specifically to the Warsaw Aerodrome is that the embankment at the end of runway 11 needed to be described in the AIP for Poland. But another interesting incident nevertheless that the aviation industry has definitely learned from. I would just like to say thank you for listening this far into the video and if you have listened this far please do consider subscribing as I'll be bringing a lot more videos like this out in the future. So you can keep up to date with those and I would really appreciate it too. So thank you for listening and I'll see you guys in the next one.